What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and before we dive into this video I want to let you guys know I'm going to be dropping a Q&A video in about the next two weeks. Um, I'm thinking not this upcoming Friday but the Friday after that I'll be dropping that video. So if you have any questions at all whether they be football related, Jaguar related, anything related leave them in the comment section down below or you can message me on any of my social media accounts all those links are in the description down below ask me a question get a shout out get to know your boy Treep talks just a little bit better so without further ado ladies and gentlemen hit that intro Fournette, Fournette goes airborne he's in touchdown Jaguars tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out it's over the Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs you know, the last couple of years, the Jaguars have been the off-season champs, off-season champs, off-season champs. More often than not, that really doesn't mean anything, but it meant a little bit in 2017 with the signing of Clayus and AJ. Um, and then last year, we went out inside Andrew Norwell. He got injured. And, you know, last year's off-season wasn't too great. And this year's off-season, I don't think will be too great either. Like I always say, the Jaguars are probably going to be shipping guys off getting rid of more guys and they're going to be bringing guys in t in this year but hopefully guys like Calais Campbell who have restructured their contract um will be able to do that more players will be able to do that in order for the Jaguars to again have more money to bring more winners into Jacksonville unfortunately there are going to be some players that we all know and love that are going to get cut and there's going to be some players that we all know and love that are going to get traded. So ladies and gentlemen, here are three players from the Jaguars that are going to get traded and three players from the Jaguars that are going to get cut. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first off, let's talk about the three players I think the Jaguars will cut for the 2019 season, starting with defensive tackle Marcel Darius when the Jaguars traded for him midway through the 2017 season. A lot of people were surprised. But he proved to be a very good addition to the squad. He really helped out in the run defense. And he had a couple of sacks as well. And he was one of the premier players on this defensive line. A lot of great players on this defensive line that the Jaguars have tried to build up for years. Unfortunately, it's going to have to start kind of rebuilding again. Because guys like Marcel Darius, unfortunately, will not be on the team next year. The guy has a really, really expensive contract. And with guys like Taven Bryan, who can kind of fill that role, that's kind of why they drafted him, to move from the DM position to more of a defensive tackle position, I could see the Jaguars getting rid of Marcel Darius, getting rid of that big contract to save them some money so maybe they can go out in this offseason and sign somebody uh, really good uh, to fill that void maybe. And like I always say, the defensive tackle for the Jaguars this year is a need. And a lot of people, when I posted the video on, you know, the biggest team needs for the Jaguars outside of the quarterback position, they saw the defensive tackle. They're all like, well, oh, my God, I'm going to type in the comment section. I'm going to be really angry at Tree because we have Marcel Darius. We have Malik Jackson. We don't need any more D tackles. I guarantee you a lot of defensive linemen this year are going to find themselves cut or traded. The only two people that are 100% protected on this defensive line are Yannick Ngakwe and Calais Campbell. So if you're not those two guys, you have the potential of leaving this team via cut or via trade. And Marcel Darius is a guy that I think the Jaguars will cut. He's also kind of getting up there in age just a little bit. I believe he just turned 30 not too long ago. So Marcel Darius, unfortunately, is going to be one of the cuts for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And speaking of defensive tackles, we're going to talk about Malik Jackson, how I think Malik Jackson is going to be cut as well. And that one, the writing's kind of on the wall for that one. He kind of got benched his last eight games in Jacksonville for um, more in the light of Avery Jones. Um, and Avery Jones had a great 2018 season, don't get me wrong, but it was kind of surprising to see Avery Jones uh, get the start over Malik Jackson um, and see Malik Jackson get benched and, you know, kind of see his last days in Jacksonville dwindle. Um, after the good 2017 season, he had no doubt about that. And, you know, it kind of makes me wonder also, because I know Malik Jackson and Calais Campbell are really, really good friends. So I'm wondering if Jacksonville is going to be wanting to try and restructure Malik Jackson's contract to keep him with Calais Campbell. Um, again, I might be reading a lot into that because, you know, if you're the Jags, you want to keep Calais Campbell happy. He was in the Pro Bowl interview the other day. 
um, that I watched on YouTube from the Jaguars YouTube channel. And he said that Malik Jackson is his best friend on the team, you know, so maybe the Jaguars are going to take that into consideration and try to restructure his contract and try to keep him here to maybe keep Calais happy. But, I mean, if they're not going to do that, they're just going to cut the guy. Uh, they don't really see a big use for him. Again, another guy with a big contract. Um, in 2017, he got eight sacks. He could not match that number or uh, even come closely to it, I don't think. I think Malik maybe got three sacks this season. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but he definitely did take a step back. He definitely did regress. And uh, he does have that expensive contract like Marcel Darius. So, again, I would not be surprised if Malik Jackson was cut by the Jacksonville Jaguars. And finally, my dark horse cut pick is Carlos Hyde. I think Carlos Hyde's gonna get cut because the Jaguars, they just brought in Thomas Rawls. They have Leonard, Leonard Fournette and the Jags are kind of rebuilding their relationship just a little bit. And hopefully they bring back Corey Grant and then, you know, get a guy throughout the draft. So, um, there's just no really need for Carlos Hyde, especially with the minimal amount of times the Jaguars truly used him uh, when they traded for him a fifth-round pick, which was a terrible, terrible trade. How the hell is Dave Caldwell still in the front office? I don't fucking know. But, you know, um, I think a lot of you know, people are going to see that that trade was even more worthless because the Jaguars are going to end up cutting Carlos Hyde, whether that be during the offseason or maybe more inside of training camp. Um, I don't think Carlos Hyde will be on this team um, when the regular season starts here in 2019, and I think he's going to end up getting cut by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now let's talk trades. Those three players I just listed all kind of had have some sort of trade value. If it wasn't for their age and the contract uh, for Malik Jackson and Marcel Darius, I think they could be easily trade candidates, but I think with the age and the expensive contracts, I don't think that they're going to be able to be trade bait, and you are going to, you know, right away call me a hypocrite because of the first name I'm going to say on this list, but I actually believe it to be true. The first person I think the Jaguars are going to trade in 2019 is quarterback Blake Bortles. I, hear me out on this one. So yes, he's been a pile of shit ever since he came into the league, but he's been our pile of shit. You know, we've liked the guy. And I don't think the Jaguars have it in them to just cut him. I mean, they did it to David Garrard, I know. But with, you know, how much does front office really seem to care about him? I think they're going to try and ship him off to a team that either will use him as a primary backup or could use him actually as a starting quarterback. There's not a lot of teams out there that are really searching for a guy like Blake Bortles. Uh, maybe like a Green Bay, like the Packers, you know, can trade Bortles to the Packers for like a seventh round pick for them to be a backup. You know, just getting something out of Blake Bortles. I think that that is return on your investment. You don't just cut a guy that you drafted in the first round in 2014. I mean, you could keep him around for a while to be the backup, but that's an expensive ass backup. So I think the most sensible thing to do is to trade Blake Bortles away to another team. And no, you're not going to get a first round pick out of him. You're probably not even going to get anywhere above a sixth round pick for Blake Bortles. But like I said, you're getting more out of Bortles than you will by just cutting it. So like I said, I think they trade him to a team that's kind of in need of a backup quarterback, whether that be like Green Bay, Atlanta, you know, somewhere. Blake Bortles hopefully will just be a career backup, you know, just like his idol Chad Henney. That was that was the that was the worst part. That's how you knew Blake was gonna be bad when, you know, he really got led by Chad Henney. You know, Chad Henney was a stopgap guy, and that was the guy Bortles had to look up to. You knew that uh, you were in trouble <laughs> after that. So, you know, maybe if Bortles looks up to a guy like Aaron Rodgers, I mean, maybe he takes over Green Bay and gives them a Super Bowl. Who knows? But I think the Jaguars can get a little bit of return on their investment by drafting Blake Bortles in the first round and hopefully training him for something and not just cutting him and giving him away uh, completely. Now, this one's another dark horse, and I don't know 100% if I could believe this one. I, I just kind of did it so I could have three guys on each side. Um, Telvin Smith. Telvin Smith had the biggest step back in 2019. Um, he was a monster his first couple of seasons in the league, one of the best defensive players we had. And he still was one of the best defensive players we had. I believe he did lead the team in tackles, and he did get an interception or whatever. But, you know, it's just like little things throughout the game. 
he just messes up in crucial times, I guess I should say. You know, in pass coverage, man. Pass coverage is Kelvin Smith's kryptonite. And it's just, it's just been getting more and more embarrassing to watch. And a lot of teams don't necessarily have a solid linebacking core. And I think trading Telvin Smith will be a good idea because, you know, in the offseason, you can sign a, a true middle linebacker and then you can have him and Miles Jack out there and maybe draft a guy. But, you know, I think I'd take Miles Jack over Telvin Smith every day of the week if that's what we're going to be doing and uh, giving Miles more playing time. So trading Telvin Smith away, whether you get something out of that, maybe trading him to the Eagles. Hey, the Eagles have pretty good the Eagles have pretty good linebackers. But, um, you know, finding somewhere to trade him, I think you could probably get a pretty good return on your investment from Telvin Smith, maybe a third rounder. Um, maybe even a second rounder maybe um, he's still a good player has a lot of years left in him um, he's just taken a step back and I think the Jaguars right now are trying to improve for the future and they don't need guys that have kind of you know taken that step back they want guys to continually uh, step forward and get better every year and you know right now Tillman Smith has stepped back and you know you could also make the argument this is his first really big step back but you know, and I wouldn't take it out of the realm of possibility for Jacksonville to really just stomp on the head and just do it. Because, you know, and, and like I said, I don't really give in to the whole Telvin Smith trade hype, but I could see it happening, um, especially with how the minds are in the front office. Now, I talked about how Telvin Smith had one bad year, and now everybody's talking about how he could get traded, and, you know, that's kind of how it is with this next guy. But, you know, he's usually injured, you know, there's a lot that goes in with him, you know, we got his incentives taken away, and of course, now you know I'm talking about Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette is way too good to cut. There's somebody out there that will trade for Leonard Fournette, and there's a lot of people talking about trading him for Nick Foles, which I would not do. I would trade Leonard Fournette away to get something in return uh, for a different position of need. So... Trade Leonard Fournette to get a solid wide receiver and a draft pick. And you can send over a draft pick as well. I don't necessarily know what wide receiver I'm thinking of right off the bat, but I'm looking for a guy that could come in, be a number one guy, and be reliable for this team in 50-50 ball situations, especially if we're going to be giving up our bell cow running back in Leonard Fournette. So, you know, that's that also raises the question, who would be the Jaguars starting running back if we cut Carlos Hyde? We trade Leonard Fournette, and um, we let TJ Yeldon go. So in my perfect world, we keep Corey Grant. We get, I guess we keep that Williams guy. And, um, you know, we got Thomas Rawls. And I think the Jaguars should also try in the later rounds to draft a guy out of Washington named Miles Gaskins. I think Miles Gaskins is going to be a stud in the NFL, and I think he's going to be one of the best running backs in his class. And he's not even projected to go until the fifth, sixth round. Mark my words, Miles Gaskins he is going to be a stud in the NFL, and hopefully the Jaguars are able to snatch him up because I'm calling that. that that's my call right now. Is Miles Gaskins is going to be the biggest sleeper in this year's draft. And he's going to have one hell of a year, one hell of an NFL career, I think. So hopefully the Jaguars can snatch up a guy like that in the draft, maybe get some guy in free agency. But isn't that nuts that if we trade Fournette, if we do everything in my videos that I've said, if we get Fournette, cut Yelp, cut Yeldon, then our starting running back is probably going to be Thomas Rawls for 2019, and that is just flat out incredible. And that was three players the Jaguars will trade and three players the Jaguars will cut. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget you can check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Pixley. Follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Tree Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel five days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them to just straight facts. Also, leave your questions down below so I can answer them in my Q&A video in two weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.